If you own or work for a consumable e-commerce brand, the video you're about to watch, I am willing to bet, is the most significant data analysis that you will see for the rest of 2019. I know, bold claim, but the reason I, I believe this is because this analysis that we did on cohort-specific LTV to CAC for our consumable skincare brand completely transformed the understanding of our business and it led us to have the largest revenue month, week, and day in the history of the brand in the last 30 days. Coleman and I put together an analysis of our product-specific cohort LTV to CAC. And when we say LTV, what we really mean are 30, 60, 90, and 120 day payback periods. So we're about to take you through a 25 minute breakdown of how we set up, analyze, or set up, aggregate, and analyze data for our skincare brand, Bamboo Earth. It's been completely transformative for our business, and I think it will be for yours. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on where you're tuning in. Today, we are bringing to you a special broadcast of uh, some work that my friend here, Coleman, has done um, to give me all the feels about one of our brands. Special feels, all the special feels. So Coleman, why don't you give the people a brief breakdown of what we're going to be looking at today. Yeah, they can see the screen, right? Yep, they cool. got screen and us. Like, yeah, what a treat. Yeah, absolutely. Spreadsheets and the two of us, so that's not, like nothing better. Uh, yeah, this is like one short of a trifecta. So on the left side, you will see Facebook's ad manager, which you should be highly familiar with. See the uh, Bamboo Earth is the little skincare brand that we acquired in March, and uh, we're working on turning around from $100,000 total top line revenue 2018. And um, yeah, we have, you know, have had high hopes for the brand and we're tweaking things for a long time. And then um, only recently decided that uh, as a consumable brand, what we should be focused on is this LTV to customer acquisition cost metric. Um, Don't mind all my updates. Yeah, it basically just shows the uh, return on investment for uh, dollars spent on different time horizon windows. So what we did here is... Um, Hold on, before we get into how, mm -hmm. I want to stop you right there. So we, as he said, so 4 by 400 which is the division of our business where we own our own brands, which we think gives us a ton of unique insights on um, the agency side of the business. Um, so and vice versa. Yeah, and vice versa. So primarily our focus of 4x400 has been acquiring brands sub $500,000 in revenue. Like the premise that we have right now in that we are not a venture backed uh, entity with a ton of cash making big plays. We are looking for awesome entrepreneurs with great products um, that are looking for operational, logistical and marketing support, financial to help grow their business. Um, and so Bamboo Earth is sort of a perfect example of this, where their founder, Amber, has created a truly special product line um, that women love that we just wanted to come alongside from a business standpoint and apply some of our experience to helping it grow. And so we've been doing this. We, we This was in March we started? Yeah, March 1. Right. So the biggest... So, and the, one of the fun things about this is being able to share really intimate data that for any of our client side, we would never be able to do. But this business was sub $100,000 when we bought it. I think their biggest year was 120 grand. So small family business that was basically providing for um, the, their family, but we saw a ton more potential in it. So when we started in March, the mistake that we made, and this be is because all of our experience was in product where the business was not an LTV function. Yeah, not necessarily consumable. Right, it wasn't a consumable, higher AOV. If you think about the other businesses that we have um, at 4x400, so FC Goods is really high AOV. You're talking about $160. We have product lines that go all the way up to $400. So, and it, that's a single SKU. It's not a business where you're gonna deal with a high LTV. Slick, even though it's a consumable wash product, it's a, it's, we sell them in kits, it's $100 AOV. Um, we weren't ever focused on looking at LTV horizons and trying to think about making money in a more latent value capture. So because of that experience, we were sort of 
misguided in our initial thought about what bamboo earth was. We were thinking about AOV and how we create the best margin on our initial acquisition and all that. Yeah, click. run across on one day click. All the things that we sort of thought about with all of our other brands. Um, and then we sort of had this moment along the way. For me, it was really after July. So July was this, or sorry, June. Is it June? Where's the month where you had, uh, maybe May. One of those months, May or June, where we had been spending a really small amount, about 10 grand. We'd been going through a rebrand, um, trying to get the website cleaned up and a bunch of things. And so we were sort of just glowing slowly in scale. And we had good 90 day data. Yeah, we had, we had some, some good data. And what we saw was that, um, we had this ridiculously high LTV at the time. Mm -hmm. Like if, yeah. if you look here at the, we call this the pre four by 400 LTV, this Paul and I just highlighted over here. Um, you have this LTV data that over the lifetime of the brand customers were worth an exorbitant amount of money, like almost, almost well, higher. Amount of money. Yeah. Where when we saw that, what, what we sort of thought was like, well, is that just made up by a really small subset of people that have spent a stupid amount of money? Cause we have customers that have spent thousands of dollars on the ground. Yeah. yeah. But because it was only 2,000 customers, how trustworthy is this? Um, and then as we started to think about it, we started to say like, well, maybe what we're missing here is that maybe that number is truer than we think it is. Maybe the magic in this product is what we actually was the reason we bought the brand is that the product is great. And so we thought, let's figure out if we can really identify the LTV in different time horizons. Mm -hmm. Because one of the mistakes that people make, in my mind, is they think about LTV, and that number just means the history of the brand. And that could be a year, it could be three years, it could be five years, it's not really a useful metric. That's the kiss of death for cash flow management. Exactly, in a business that depends on cash flow, if you're working off of an LTV number that's two years long, like nobody has the cash to wait two years to realize the value. VCs so definitely don't have the patience to wait. Like yeah, exactly. So instead, what we wanted to figure out was this idea of payback periods. 30, 60, 90, and 120 days. If we could look at how much money are we making in these different payback periods, um, we could figure out potentially whether or not um, pushing our acquisition numbers at a lower cap or at a higher cap might be working. We might actually be winning when we thought we were losing. So that was the task that we gave to Coleman. It was like, Coleman, okay. And one of the infuriating things is that there's no tool that does this well. Right? Yeah, not yet. I'm working on building one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's what we're here to sort of hopefully maybe offer you guys a chance for. But there's no tool that allows you to instantly, by different cohorts, see these different payback periods and windows. By product, because that's actionable data. Yeah. Exactly. So what we really wanted to figure out was like, okay, we want to see the whole brand. But even more than that, we want to go, if you came into the brand by this product, what is your different um, LTV? If you came in by a discount, what's your different LTV? So to create different cohorts and then assign values to them that we can then use to inform our ad um, materials. So that was, the, that was the premise. It was like, Coleman, go see if you can figure this out. So Coleman, what I want you to do is walk through how on earth you did this and what the output is. Yeah, um, so the how on earth piece first. So uh, I'm, we'll move into focusing on this part for now. Sure, yeah. So Excel is what I really nerd out on and Google Sheets is like the you know ugly stepbrother of Excel, but um, had to use it anyways because it's the only platform that I could figure out how to integrate you know, Zapier and uh, you know, Facebook ads you know, real-time data pull in. So essentially, like, there's a bunch of back-end stuff where uh, I had to import the entire Shopify order history, um, you know, put a bunch of formulas in that help dictate, like, the person's, each individual customer's first order date um, and their first order product. And so, um, so and this then, is, like, the raw import right here, right? Yeah. This is just all the orders. Raw import. And then on the very far right-hand side, you'll see, you know, all of the custom formulas and everything. Oh, sorry. It's in the Shopify order data. In this one? Yeah, in that sheet. Um, and then there are some lookups because we changed product names and stuff like that. And then, and then uh, you know, so all, all of that came from a manual integration through Zapier, and that updates um, in real time as orders come through uh, so Shopify. You, for those that don't know, Zapier is a, basically, it's like an if it function, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's an if this, then that type tool that allows you to pull and build connections between different softwares. Is mm -hmm. that a fair description? Yeah, 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 yeah. And there's a lot of integrations there. It's a pretty cool tool. But um, And then customer acquisition cost comes from Facebook because that's primarily the only place that we're doing prospecting, um, advertising, and uh, that integrations through Supermetrics, another like very similar platform. 
Um, so then essentially what it does is it, you know, kind of concatenates all of that data. Um, concatenates, wow. It's a real word. I learned yeah, it from that's, Excel. That's it's fantastic. Actually, yeah, so um, it yeah, basically consolidates, concatenates all that, that information by product um, so that we can see like, okay, what is the lifetime value and the average order value of um, product, like, each customer when they enter through this product, right? right. So, what so you're heard, sorting them into a cohort mm -hmm. based on time. Based on time, and then also basically a cohort based on uh, first product purchase. Right, so yeah. you're getting them into different groups. So you're identifying, you see here, the product that they're purchasing. Mm -hmm. You're getting what cohort related to time. Yep. You're getting whether it was a discount, yes or no. Correct. So immediately you're establishing them into different cohorts, just meaning groups, mm -hmm. right? That then allow us, when we go back to look at data, the people based on these different Correct. Attributes. Correct. The discount one's not entirely complete yet, but you can understand the logic there. It's essentially going to be like, how much is this person worth to us over time if we discount their first purchase, right? right. But are they going to be significantly less or are they going to be more because they you know, got in at a lower barrier to conversion. So, yep. um, so then, you know, it's, it's broken out by individual. You can click on some of the, actually don't click on those ones at the back. They just have too small a sample size. Go Let's over and click on like nice. complete collection. Super interesting. Um, so this means that, you know, well, we haven't driven any traffic there. So it's yeah, not let's, that let's do, let's do just petite grain. Yeah. Petite grain is like obviously the one that we have the biggest cohort sample size for. So, it essentially says that people enter um, at a cost of $46.72. You can click on that cell. They enter at an AOV of $55.55. And then within 30 days, bump up to, they make another purchase usually because the difference between 55 and 72 is not one reorder, um, which you know corroborates the fact that like our product is too big for people to reorder within one month. Okay, so let's stop here. So because... Here's the important thing. So if we look at this, initially, remember, if we're just, sorry, if we're just looking at CAT to AOV, if we are stuck on that, then we're sitting here looking at a 1.19 raw. So initially, imagine you're running an ad account and you're sitting at 1.19. And if that's the number, despite our great margins on this product, we're sitting here going, we're losing. We're dead. It's over. And this is a thing I see clients say all the time. My 1.19 is a loser. I'm dead. But what we wanted to figure out, and the theory was, well, maybe, maybe that's true, but maybe it's not. Maybe the reality is, is that actually is good enough to win and really, really win big even. And so the, the thought was, and our initial thought was actually about replenishment, at least yeah. mine was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was the idea of like someone would order a product, they would use it all up, and then they would Come buy back it. and buy it again. Yes. Yeah. That was the initial theory that we wanted to test. And so what we were trying to figure out is like, what's the consumption rate and how the time between purchases? But we were totally wrong with that. Which is still important because it'll shrink all of this. Yes. Yeah, so that's still something you want to think about. But what we found was that what people are doing is they're buying product to qualify the trust and interest in the larger set of products. Totally, totally. So, so really the actionable data that comes out of this is like, what product do we lead with yes. for people to get introduced to our brand that will, you know, and, and the answer is really clear. Where do you develop trust? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, and we're going to show you the, the, what, what we learned in a second. But the, so if you see here, what happened was there's a really big jump between your 30, between your initial AOV and within 30 days, we're getting another $17 in profit off of the brand because we're not paying for that. It all happens through email or organic repurchasing. So we exclude all our existing customers from our prospect. And that's really important for this process. But immediately you can say within 30 days, our, LTV, our ROAS essentially goes from 1.19 to 1.5 right away. And then 60 days jumps again to 1.73, jumps again to 1.85, jumps again to almost two to one within 120 days. Yeah, and Facebook's really great about giving you visibility on you know 28 day clicks. So you'll see most of that 1.54 yep. show up in the on your 28 day window. Exactly. But at the same time, it stops there. And if you're looking at 60, 90, 120, if you're looking at payback periods for investors and yep. like, you know, cash flow management, new inventory and yep. holiday and all of these different considerations, like you have to look beyond 28 days. So when we're sitting here, so, so this was like, we were doing this when our ads weren't as good. We were struggling. You can see the initial AOV to CAC in these early months. Well, we've done a lot better job on the ad side in these last two months. So you're sitting here with an AOV to CAC of 
the so basically ROAS, that's essentially what AOV CAC is, but your ROAS now in September is 1.9 to start, and you can see it's already jumped to two and a half to one in um, within 30 days. Yeah. So and this we're going, oh my closed. God, we're it's, smashing. That yeah. window's not even fully closed. And if we look at this, in reality, it's going to almost get to four to one by the end of it. Because mm -hmm. you're basically doubling your initial, almost about 80%, doubling between your 30 day and between your 120 day. So if we can start at a 1.9 to one, that's going to be almost a four to one by the time we're done. Like, and so that's when we suddenly realized, oh my God, we're winning and we didn't even know it, push the pedal and we've been scaling like crazy. So if, yeah, if not more than four to one, because now we have a giant new cohort of emails and we're going to be doing one off blasts. I mean, exactly. And, of band, yeah. and all of this was before we even have really dug into building our post purchase email flows, yeah. really making the experience great, thinking about unboxing, trying to drive. Like we hadn't even been doing anything. This was strictly off the back of the quality of the product. Well, it's got to be sequential. You yes. have to know this before you start doing a post purchase flow because. How long should your post purchase flow be? Right. What if day is it in? Yeah. If, is is it seven days super intensive, two emails a day, or is it you know one email or two emails a week for ninety days? Exactly. Yeah. So what we're so the the, the the hunt was not only is the brand growing, which like okay we've got data here that shows the overall brand growth by time window, but more importantly, what was the overall which SKUs represent the best cap excuse me, CAC to LTV. So as we think about an ad account, like, and this is the number one thing that I think clients make a mistake on is that they have an ad account ROAS target that's just one blended number. They just say, give me a two to one account wide, doesn't matter what SKU, doesn't matter what product. And the reality is not all customers are made equal, not all products are equal in value. You have to really understand. So basically, if you look at this, these are our top five largest um, products that, we per that, that get purchased. Uh, that have the best CAC to LTV ratio, but you can see the repairing facial serum is by far and away right now the best CAC to LTV ratio for yeah. us. And, and the narrative supports that. It's a product with three ingredients. Serums are perceived really highly. It's got, you know, the uh, MSRP is $68, um, and there's only three ingredients, and it's got this, like, you know, it, it works like really, really well. Right. Like, just tons of really good reviews on the PDP. Right. Like it's a just really simple product and it's good customer experience. It smells good. So, so the entire narrative like really fits with that specific product. It, it, yep. you know, it's like, where should we lead? It tells us. Exactly. And so you can see that we like are able to identify a very clear winner, winner that can then inform how we think about our ad strategy. So these things are both informing each other in both directions. We, if you look at how we set up the ad account, the reason that we do it by these specific products is because it allows us to inform the cohorts on the back end. If we just run one blended ad account, like it will be almost impossible to segment out the CAC relative to products. Because what Coleman does is he pulls in ads relative to the PDP, the landing page that it goes yeah. to. Yeah. Right? So when we do the Cactus Concentrate Funnel, he's able to say, okay, even though we know it's not perfect, right? There are people that go to that landing page that end up buying a different product. We don't care. We're willing to accept a margin of error here to have a general idea about what's happening. Because, you, because you still have to get actionable data. And your action is going to be, what do people see first when they have the first, very first touch point with my brain? Is it the cactus, which is this yes. nice blue color that's like really intriguing. Is it the repairing facial serum, which has like just the most glowing review? Is it the petite grain, which like just is really simple and yep. makes, you know, like has, you know, concepts about being a waterless moisturizer yep. and like hooks people like that. So you ultimately have to have a hook and you have to drive people to a PDP. Once they get on your website, I don't care what they buy. Yeah, right. right? Like okay. let them buy that or let them not buy that. Let them buy everything. It'll still, this will still give us data on what they purchased first. Yep. Um, so we'll be able to see if there's a huge discrepancy between like they entered a cactus, but then they purchased petite grain. Right. Right. And yep. that just means like they're looking for a cheaper moisturizer. And so, you know, there's lots of action we can take on that. So, so the exciting thing about this is like we can then start to go because what we do is like your the data is realizing itself all the time. So what I mean by that is that like so May is our last closed window that goes out 120 days. Well, obviously September we don't have 120 days of data yet, but you can see that like as the data realizes itself, um, it will auto populate in here. So the way that Coleman set it up is that. CAC runs every day based on its connection to Facebook ads and then the order export from Shopify as well. Um, so at the end of the next month, we will have access
actual 60-day LTV to CAC for the August cohort, but right now we can still be predictive about it based on the average increase in the previous months. So what I mean is if you look at all these red numbers, they're predictive. They're not actualized yet. So we can go in and say, okay, so I'll show you how we do this in September as an example. So I can say, all right, for September, if I know that in the past four cohorts, so between May, June, the average increase from the initial AOV to CAC, these are the percentages. What we'll do is we'll say, okay, then if we can say this equals this number times one plus the average of this. That'd be the last four months. This. But you, but yeah, this. you should probably do just those three months because that August window is not fully. Uh, okay, so let's just do those last three. Yeah. So we'll take the three fully closed windows and basically what I'm saying is give me the average growth over the three full windows that I know and apply it in a way that gives me a predictive number. So you can see here, I can expect, I'm in the middle of September right now and this CAC is gonna keep improving um, as the month goes on and as we continue, we just restocked a bunch of stuff. So this CAC will update and now this number, this predictive number will update in real time as well. But I as, I as the brand owner can start to look out and go, oh man, this group of customers that I'm acquiring, like look at this, look at this August cohort. This group of people now, as we've continued to improve, is predicted to be incredibly valuable. Yeah. So again, we went from being business owners who thought we were failing to understanding our numbers better and realizing, oh my gosh, we have to start spending more money. Yeah. We're winning and winning big. Yeah, and I bet this 90-day 4.33 for August uh, is going to increase even yep. more because that includes the Black Friday's every Monday window. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So that's then this goes back to our strategy for holiday where we go, that's such a good point, is that when you start to get into windows where your purchase intent is going to go way through the roof for existing customers, that number is going to be so much that more valuable. So these customers that we're acquiring now are going to be massively valuable in the future. So So what this what this whole thing does also is it dictates like the as as it dictates the products that we lead with, well like one of my kind of strategies for that um, is gonna be, you know, I, what I really want to do somehow is on the 10th of October, do a buy one, give one mini kit. Yeah. If you buy one and, and the pitch is basically like, it's going to be only organic. It's not going to be paid anything. So there's no CAC associated with it, but, right. but it's basically just an email blast, social blast. Like, Hey, the holidays are coming up. Get your travel sizes now. Yep. By the way, when you buy one, you get to give one to somebody who's never bought anything from us before because we know that when they come back, yep. when these people come back, like that's, I mean, the complete mini kit is a great product to lead with. Um, so you're going to find that, that people like within 30 days will return and purchase something. It might not be the mini kit, but right. 30 days from 1010 is going to be like, you know, well, the mini kit's a great example, right? right? Like, so the mini kit, which is perfectly logical. It's exactly what you would want a mini kit to do is sample it and then come back and buy. So you see this massive jump between these two things. But what I would say now becomes Coleman's job is to go, well, that's a massive jump, but this is pretty flat. Yeah. How do, now, part of that is just the, the cohort hasn't come through all the way yet. Right. It's basically but, a new cohort at 30 days because right. they're coming and trying a new product. Now. Totally. Right. So, but, but that gives you an actual thing to go, well, I need to go see if I can improve this part, specific part of the post-purchase experience. So you can start to think about how you actually do that um, in unique ways. So like, there's just, this gives you so many points of entry into opportunities to improve the business in different ways. Um, and it gives us visibility to what's happening. I met with a woman yesterday who's running um, a lingerie apparel business, and I was just looking. I'm looking at her ad account, and she's at two and a half to one, um, spending a small amount of money. And into my mind, I'm going, "Oh my gosh, you're winning so much more than you even realize." Really? Because it's the same logic, right? It's like if you're winning at two and a half to one, that tech that you have no idea what that customer is worth to you off the back end. Yeah. Like you're just sitting there looking at AOV. Laundry is consumable, but, right? But, but any apparel it's business, trust. it's trust. That, and because she sells, she sells apparel, she sells pajamas, she sells swimwear. So yeah. you have all these things that you can take that customer and upsell them on yeah. to get you to this place. So mm -hmm. um, the actionable thing for all of you that are watching this is like Coleman is going to put out and is working on, maybe, soon, a way for you to automate this for your business. Um, fund me for that. Yeah, really. Like, Actually, yeah. Because this is like, if you don't know this, if, especially if you're a consumable, but if you don't know this, no matter what your brand is, you're missing out on a massive opportunity to deeply understand what is happening in your business and to inform your advertising strategy in a way that's incredibly real. So um, 
yeah, hopefully this was informative. Um, I'm sure there's tons of questions about how to do it, how it specifically relates to your brand. Feel free to drop them in the comments and we'll do our best to interact with them as we can. Um, you know, what's fun about this is like for a lot of you, you know, we were on the agency side, we work with a lot of really big businesses that are spending, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. But what we love about this is like, this is us in the weeds spending 10 grand a month, 20 grand a month, trying to grow a business from a hundred thousand dollars to, you know, half a million this year and 2 million next year and 5 million the year after that. Um, and this data helped us unlock a realization that we were winning in ways that we never initially thought. And so we're going to have a much bigger year this year than we ever anticipated yeah. by understanding this information. Yeah, we did 66 grand in August. <laughs> right. Two thirds of the revenue of the last of 12 months in 2018. Right. And yesterday we were at 30 grand. Yesterday we had our biggest day ever. Right. All of off the back of, we literally changed nothing other than going, oh, we could spend more because we're winning more than we thought because the product's so good. Yeah. Like literally nothing about the business changed other than our understanding of it. Mm -hmm. That was the only thing that needed to change. Yeah. Um, it was so permissive. You know? it, it was right. Totally. It gave us permission to, to, to go win when we already were. So um, hopefully there's a gold mine out there for you to discover as well in the same way that we have in this instance. I uh, would love to talk it through with you and see if whether CTC can be helpful in helping you grow and scale your brand um, in a way that makes the ad strategy more effective by understanding more about your brand. Uh, Coleman will be in the comments responding to the best of his ability. He'll link up some of the tools um, and we appreciate you joining.